All right. So we're going to work on a bunch of things for Daytona today. Um, if you drop in, uh, drop a uh, question in chat. But what I'm going to be working on, at least in the beginning, is helping to draw the architecture for what Daytona looks like. And so I've got a start here, and we're going to go we're going to go into it more. Um, so let's just let's just talk about what we've got so far. So um, there's two two components. There's the user side and then the server side. So in this case, uh, in this diagram, uh, on a laptop, someone has Daytona installed. Now, Daytona is just one binary. The CLI and the server are in the same binary. So just one thing to install. And they're going to be using the CLI on their laptop connecting to a remote Daytona server. Now, that also could be local if they're running Docker desktop, but you know, um, the server is separate and it's the thing that actually runs the workspaces. And so on the laptop, you've got the GitHub credentials, you've got your IDEs. So whether that's um, VS Code or SSH with VI, um, JetBrains will be coming. Uh, you're going to do work on your laptop. That's going to go through a VPN or SSH to the actual workspaces that are themselves going to expose ports. Um, and one of the things that I wanted to show was Daytona has a server, which could be a VM or a cloud instance. Um, I've actually got a, a Linux box that's right behind me here um, that, that's running Daytona. And you can have multiple workspaces. Uh, Basically, anything that fits inside of a Linux container can fit inside of Daytona. So in this example, I've got some Python, some Vue, and some Java. Um, really, anything that's containerizable is going to work. Uh, and the other thing I wanted to show is that there is a little Daytona agent inside of each workspace um, that's helping sort of facilitate all of the magic that you're seeing. So the port forwarding, um, it'll also make sure that there's a Daytona CLI inside so that you'd be able to operate on that on that environment from inside that environment. Um, and um, so we're going to expand this picture a little bit. Um, so one thing that we want to do is highlight more like what's happening here. So the REST API is for Daytona. So we can say, um, let's see, we're going to just grab this. And I don't think that this is going to be the, the ultimate um, example of this. I just think that for right now, this is just a useful... Um, so we're going to drag this here to say this is the Daytona REST API. Um, and then application ports come. Let's go ahead and give, let's see. Yeah, let's zoom a little bit here. We're going to drag this out a bit. We'll make this a bit bigger. Go ahead and group that together. So the REST API and application ports. Um, the other thing that happens that we should can we should there is a reverse proxy. So I'm going to go ahead and look at the library. I want a cloud. work. So we're going to put this here. We're going to make it smaller. We are also going to undo that. We're going to make that so it's got some blue. This is a cloud. So we're going to put this here to show that that's where it is. We're going to 
to say, it's interesting. So let's see, I'm gonna make this the background. I don't want it to be clear. I'm gonna say the background is white. There, so it doesn't, ah, perfect. So it doesn't, um, we're gonna get some text. Reverse proxy. Uh, so one of the things that Daytona can do is Daytona can um, actually let you collaborate with folks by exposing ports on these applications to the reverse proxy. So I want to drag this down a little bit. Pull this inside. But I want that to be black. And we're going to say this is HTTPS. And we're going to show, we're going to grab a different laptop. different user, we're going to say collaborator, collaborator, um, center, mm, interesting, let's go ahead and just delete that, and we will add it ourselves, let's say collaborator. Set that there. We will group that selection. Uh, library. I want. Uh, you have Firefox. What about Chrome? You have Chrome. That's GitHub. Slack. Let's, let's see why would it's surprising that they have Slack but not a browser. Uh, let's see, browse libraries. Let's go find something else. Elixir. Elk, D and D five E, nice. Some application icons, some gophers. I'm gonna go ahead and add that. Go back. So Daytona is written in Go, and so I will take advantage of having that Go at some point. Oh, actually, I should do this. We're going to go ahead and add that. Browse libraries, we're gonna go back. One of 
these things has got to have a browser in it. Well, just show me you can find one with all of them. Oh my goodness, give me a break. Copy image. Yeah, let's get rid of that. We're just gonna do Chrome and Firefox. Because it's too much work. Find transparent. All right, that's not what I want. only needs to be big enough. Library, I also want to use users for this. We're gonna get rid of that. Get rid of, uh, ungroup. Get rid of that. Pull that together. No, our fox. That one actually is transparent. And what I want to show here is that you don't have to in order to look at this reverse proxy, you don't have to have anything, right? Like, the REST API and application ports go back and forth over this tunnel, this SSH tunnel. Let's go ahead and pull this back in here. Actually, we're gonna do that. It's fine if it's there. I'm gonna grab this. Oops, undo. I want to copy it. Where 
we're going to make this white. Full. We're going to send this to back. There we go. Oh, interesting. I'll do that. Get rid of that. Instead of saying cloud instances, we're actually going to just I think it's important since Docker, uh, you know what, I'm going to put that Docker desktop back because Because it's, I think it needs to be clear that that's going to Docker desktop. Docker desktop, or it can go to a server, library, browse, AWS. And uh, so there's Amazon. Actually, I think. I've got a I've got a logo set that I can use for this. Let me find it. Let's see. Well, 
waiting for this app to update. Because of course we are. Get rid of this. Okay. We're just going to go ahead and take these. that is this great I mean, we can always pull in more logos we're gonna make that smaller there we go Go ahead and make this also white filled. There we go. So this, this. This, no, oh, this, 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 that. Uh, group that. Pull that down. that group that all right one thing I do want to highlight is that there are ports so I want to make it look like there are ports we can we can move this out of the way I don't think I need you right now So we can, I'd like this little pipe, but I don't think there's a pipe. Oh, that's the Tara Grunt logo. That's funny. Oh, there's one. I think that this will actually get designed with a designer, which will be good because make that not sloppy. We're going to make it tiny. As we're going to say, um,
What's the default flask port? 5,000. All right, and then we're gonna do 5,000. Small, where did it? Oh, undo, undo, undo. Okay, you're not that I want. You are, we're gonna say 5,000. Uh, I know that 8080 is a pretty common one in Java land. Eighty eighty is also apparently very common in Yeah. Well, we'll just use eighty eighty for all of those then. That's fine. We're gonna say five thousand, we'll say that, copy paste it. Paste it again. We're gonna pull this down. This and these and these and these. Push this down. We're going to say actually, we're going to pull this up. Undo. So these are the Daytona providers and provisioners. Oh, can we make it a little bit bigger? Not a lot bigger. And we'll just actually just bring this front. There we in the center. Oh, I don't want that. I don't want that either. I want this. Is there a way to put a grid on this? So I had other ways that I was showing this, but I think in the end, we'll just get rid of these. Um, 
So the reason I had two views here is that I thought it was, I wanted to show three things. I wanted to show that you could have anything in here and you could have Python, Vue, or Node, whatever, and you could have Java, like you could have everything, but you could also have multiple of the same thing running. And because each of them is its own workspace that you could do all of it. So I don't know if that shows or if that is something that we should just test but anyway that that was the original that was the original idea behind how this works so so i wonder i could probably just do a let's make this bigger log in just zoom in a little bit more All right actually i could just make this Pull this in the center. And so this is the Daytona architecture. So I could do um, just a quick overview. So this is what Daytona looks like in an architecture view. If you start with a simple user, uh, one user with a laptop, then they have uh, Daytona installed. Daytona is one binary, so the CLI and the server are all in the same binary. So you can either run it locally or run it remotely. And to the user, it won't feel any different. So this box could be Docker Desktop, or this box could be a Linux server either behind you or in a cloud. It doesn't matter. And to the user, it feels the same. But one thing that we wanted to show was there's actually quite a lot of magic to make this simple. So the user has a CLI on their laptop. That's also where their GitHub credentials are gonna be. That's where they've got their browser, their ID of choice. So right now that's um, VS Code or uh, any of the anything that runs in SSH. We'll be adding support for JetBrains here in the next couple of weeks. Um, and that, communicates to a Daytona server over a VPN and SSH tunnel that we set up for you that you don't know anything about. It's not, it's transparent to you. And the CLI speaks to the server over a REST API. Also coming back, this is two-way communication. So SSH comes back. If you SSH into it, you can have a, a two-way SSH, but also application ports. So if you forward a port from your application, those can come back and you can see those locally. Um, and so that, that communication is set up for you to the server, but that also bridges, the server bridges the individual workspaces to you. And so in this example, I have a user that's, connected to a server. Again, that server could be Docker desktop. It could be a Linux server behind you. It could be in a cloud. doesn't really matter. And they've got four workspaces running. And what, we, what I wanted to show with these four different workspaces is that um, you can run anything basically in a container in here. And not only can you have different technologies, but you can have multiple of the same. So if you were working on your view project and somebody asked you for a code review, you could leave your project intact, spin up a brand new environment for that same project separately with the pull request from that uh, individual, and then you could do the code review for that and, uh, separately, having a complete clean environment, and then throw that away and go back to your original environment. You wouldn't have to mess with your environment, you know, stash your changes, set them aside, potentially mess up your environment. You can have individual environments for each change that you make. Uh, and so in this case, Python, Java, Vue, whatever you want, Go, it doesn't matter, whatever you want in there, you can put in there. Um, and then these are the providers and provisioners. So uh, we take care of running that and making that transparent no matter where that runs. And also we can provision that for you. So right now uh, we don't have the provisioners released, but we're releasing ones for DigitalOcean and, 
Amazon and all of the other cloud providers so that you could actually say, hey, I'd like a Daytona. Here's my cloud credentials, create it for me. And we will actually provision that for you. If you remember Docker Machine from back in the day, it's gonna be very familiar to how we go ahead and provision that for you. And all of this over um, a CLI that just makes it easy to use. The other bit is that there is a reverse proxy that we take care of. So you can actually reverse proxy these ports out to a URL that is publicly accessible. And so the use case for that is either to make it easy for you to serve up your application in a way that, that feels normal, like it actually has a URL that you can predict and you can you can actually build into your, your testing and your other environments, or to do collaboration. And so one of the things that I wanted to show here was that you can have collaborators who don't have Daytona installed. They have just their laptop with a browser and they can collaborate with you you know, hitting that same application that you expose on that reverse proxy so that, you know, hey, you can, if you have a PM or a designer and you have an issue or you have a question, you can actually uh, expose that application through the reverse proxy, give them a URL that they can hit from their laptop and they don't have to have Daytona installed at all. And so this is the Daytona architecture from sort of end to end. Um, I, I don't think this is the one that we'll use for the project. It's just me using Excaladraw to really quickly put some ideas on paper. But um, and we'll probably have somebody you know design this and make it look nicer. But this is what I think uh, is pretty simple to show what what that looks like. So if you have any questions, you know, drop in on uh, one of the live streams or into Slack, and we're happy to ask that, answer those questions for you. Um, but yeah, this is, this is the architecture, so hopefully that makes a lot of sense. Um, let's see. Yeah, I mean, I think that looks good. So we'll export that image. So this is Daytona Arc. All right. So let's put this back. got the Daytona architecture up and running. I think that's, you know what, I'm gonna change this. I also know that, oops, cancel. I'm gonna do, what are you doing? Nine thousand. Export that again. And replace. Perfect. Great. So I think that'll do. Um, let's go ahead and we'll go to Daytona. Let's see what's happening in the open source today. Windows issue. Yep, I'll do it. Can't try it, try mod a file. Interesting. Someone's having a problem with the binary getting removed on a MacBook. 
it was Windows, I would think maybe it would be antivirus, but that seems odd. Interesting. What are the pull requests that are open? We've got some bounties. That's pretty cool. I haven't seen that in an open source project that I've worked on, um, but yeah, it's pretty neat. So I don't run Daytona on this on this machine. I go to box loader, which is my Linux box behind me. Uh, which Daytona? Yeah, okay, great. So we're gonna do Okay, now we'll do Daytona version. We'll do Tmux. Oh, it's already running. Did I set up Daytona? Not that I know of. What about a user? No? Wow, it's still, it is running. That's, that's wild. It's an old version though. Let's go ahead and get, get rid of that. Try again. Oh, you know what we're also gonna do? just in case. So if you have large version changes and there seems to be some, um, since we're rapidly iterating, state can change and it can get messed up, just delete that and then do a Docker PS and make sure, all right, so I do have some, I don't wanna kill the home assistant, <laughs> but I do wanna kill the uh, Docker RM. Cool. So now if we do Daytona server. Oh, interesting. It restarted. So there is something that's running. There's something that's running Daytona. For me. Oh, I do have a Daytona server. Daytona server service.
I have no memory of making Daytona a service on this thing. Oh, look at that. There's an agent install, server install. Agent install. have absolutely no memory of installing a system D file for Daytona, but I clearly have one. That's wild. Um, system D service like how to find a system d service file This is wild. I cannot find it for the life of me. It's in here somewhere, but I cannot find it. But if we do, if we do Daytona create a test dash R. Tone of core records. No target. Interesting. Um, we're going to do Daytona. We're going to do provider install. And we're going to do the Docker provider. All right, so now if we do Daytona create, we should get the Docker provider and that should work.
Interesting. So I, I think there's just something about this setup that's wrong, that's broken. I will have to figure this out, but this is, this is wild. Um, so if I exit this and I do exit again, so I'm back here, Daytona. Server help. Logs, show me the config. Okay, I don't know what that is. Target, list. Okay, that's the local target. Profile. going on. None. Daytona. Create. Uh, test. Interesting. I'm pretty sure this is my setup not working. Wow. So I think I had old Daytona installed and set up as a um, system D file. And so I'm wondering if I've got something set up that's wrong. So I can, I don't have to do it here. I can always switch to my um, my iPad, or not my iPad, my Mac, and we can get the latest version. And then we can do Daytona version. Yeah, so we've got that. Um, now, if we do Daytona list, so we do have a test, so we'll do Daytona delete test. Oh, we'll do Daytona server. So I don't have, I do have it. So it's downloading something. This, for whatever reason, on this Mac, Daytona startup takes like 30 seconds. And I'm not sure why. There 
goes. Get rid of tasks real quick. Great. And now if we do Daytona create that's yeah, gonna work. Super. And now if we do Daytona code, we'll get tossed into the environment. We'll trust the authors. And we've got the environment up and running. And because it's got a dev container, we can reopen it in the container. Uh, and then, you know, inside of this will be everything that you need for this Astro app. So it'll have Node installed, it'll have Git installed, um, it'll have all of the dependencies for the application installed because when the application comes up, it's going to automatically have everything running. So it'll uh, install the dependencies, it will launch the application, and it'll open a preview window. So there goes the, that's the dependencies getting installed and downloaded. Now, it's starting the application, and it's on 4321, four, and then it opens a preview window. So then everything got installed, it started the application, and all of that was defined inside of the dev container. So that, you know, here's my node app, automatically open my preview window, and install, and then run the, the server. So that is, that's Daytona at a highlight. So um, if you're just checking in, um, we're gonna be streaming on this channel every Tuesday and Thursday at 10 a.m. Pacific. Um, one Eastern, and we'll be here to answer questions, but also just to sort of hack on Daytona. So today we worked on architecture diagrams, um, which we'll switch over to the main or the desktop real quick. So we worked on this architecture diagram. Um, I don't know if this exact diagram is going to go into the code, but this is the whole architecture for a single Daytona user. So your laptop, and then either your local or your remote Daytona server, and how everything flows. So hopefully this, this diagram helps people understand, one, that there's a lot of magic happening under the covers, and that we're making it super easy to just run these workspaces and get your work done. Uh, but two, understand like, who ends up using it. So like you have a user who uses this to get to their workspaces with VS Code or whatever they want. And then on the flip side, you can also proxy out some of these ports to real URLs that you can sh collaborate with. And so if you've got uh, designers or PMs that you want to work with, you they can they can see the application that you're running on your Daytona server, and that all of that is just magically done for them, so that they don't have to they don't have to have Daytona installed. They don't have to know anything about it. You can just give them a URL and they can check it out. But also the you know all of this happens via a VPN SSH tunnel that we set up for you. It's all transparent. You don't have to worry about it. You just use containers how you would normally use containers where you expose the application ports and we take care of all of that for you so that you just can focus on what matters which is actually working on the application. So um, I think that'll be it for today. Um, if there, I see there's a couple of people in Slack or chat. So thanks for jumping in. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Otherwise, I'll be back on Thursday and we'll do some more hacking on Daytona. Um, Thursday, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern, um, drop by. Uh, or join us in Slack. Um, so if you go to uh, the Daytona project, uh, you can find our um, 
our Slack, our Twitter, everything, um, how to install the, the project very simply and easily. And uh, that should be everything that you need to get started. So let me know if you have any questions. Otherwise, I will see you all next week, or so not next week, this Thursday uh, for the next the next stream. Oh, hi. Thanks for jumping in, Duck. All right. See you, folks.